Hey everyone and welcome back to another video in our Write Your Own GA From Scratch series. Before we get started, I've again provided an updated GitHub repo down below that has had a decent makeover. I've added a simple camera system to help scale the screen, uh, in case you don't have a 4K screen, sorry about that one. I've also made the application launch in full screen mode. Uh, you can close it by pressing the Q key. So we now get to enjoy the usual benefits of having a camera, with things like moving the camera around using the W, A, S, and D keys, uh, but unfortunately this won't help your GA in any way. I've also added a new generation counter to the screen so we can keep track of it. Uh, you'll see why at the end of this video. There is now a flag in the configuration class that you can use to toggle between fixed and random placements of your towns as well as setting the number of towns when using random placements. Oh, and I have tidied up a lot of the code, so it should now be a lot easier to follow. Well, hey, hold up there, that's not PG. Last but not least, I have added a ton of comments. For instance, check out this world-class commenting. <laughs> Uh, so if there's any part of the code that you were following along with at the time, but you've gone back and it doesn't make sense, hopefully now it will. So if you download the repo again, please make sure you update your references to the lib folder as described in our first video. As a reminder, this can be done by clicking on project, properties, reference paths, and removing what's there and adding lib. At the end of the last video, I proposed a question. What simple change could we make to drastically improve the speed of our system? And the answer was moving the calculation for the cumulative probability list uh, to the start of the do generation loop, as it doesn't change at all over the course of one generation. Note that this does require us to have a member variable in our world class to hold our probabilities. So in the previous video, we covered the selection operator and we implemented two different selection techniques to pick parents for the breeding process. If you haven't watched that one yet, you can do so here. In today's video, we will be covering the crossover. This is the simulation of the combination of genetic material that happens in nature during the breeding process. That means by the end of this video, our GA will be capable of optimizing and we will get to watch it happen. A real quick refresher before we start, we are trying to solve the traveling salesman problem using a genetic algorithm. So far, we've written a method of spawning potential solutions, a fitness evaluator that tells us how good each solution is based off length, two methods of selecting parents from our population to breed consensually, and we also have a way of visualizing them on the screen. We have a good deal to cover, so let's dive in. Before we start on the crossover, there is one thing that I want to change. In the past few videos, I've been using the terms neighbor and individual interchangeably, and this is technically correct, uh, although neighbor is sort of a legacy term. So let's go to our neighbor class and right click and go rename, and we'll rename it individual. This should update everywhere in our code that we are using this class. We will also go into our world class and right click on our neighbors property and again, rename it to this time population. Much better. Going to our do generation loop, we have selected two parents. We then want to perform our crossover. So the result of our crossover is going to be two offspring, two new individuals. So let's create a private method that returns two individuals. Let's call it crossover and let's have it take in the individual mother and individual father. So what do we want to happen when we perform our crossover? So by now you're all aware that the crossover is used to combine genetic material of two parents into a new distinct offspring. But how would you go about doing that? And what is the genetic material or genome of one of our individuals? You're probably familiar with our result or decoded genome because we've been visualizing this since the first video. It is the path that is generated as a result of a sequence. But at a fundamental level, we are representing a solution to the problem as a sequence of integers. This is our genome. So now that we know what our genome is, what is the best way to combine two of them together? I encourage you to take a pause and have a quick think before we move on. This is not a trivial question to answer. 
Okay, so I hope that you've had a think and you've come up with a potential answer. So to get started, let's grab two individuals and display their genomes like so. What we're going to do is pick some point in our individual sequences and we're going to split them into a head and into a tail. So you can probably see where this is going. Offspring A gets the head from the father and tail from the mother. Likewise, offspring B gets the head from the mother and tail from the father. And voila, we have our offspring. Ugh, but it looks like we have a problem here in our first offspring sequence. We can see that town three is showing up twice and town two is just missing completely. And likewise, in our second offspring sequence, town two is showing up twice and town three is absent. So here we have two choices. We can one, modify the way that we combine the two individuals to stop us from getting into this situation in the first place. Or two, we can have some repair operator that will fix the broken individuals for us. Both are acceptable and can be used, but I'm largely a fan of option one and don't want to have to deal with repairing broken individuals. So let's jump back and try this again. We have our individuals as before, and we have our split point. For now, let's just focus on the offspring that we're creating from the head of the father. But instead of giving it the tail from the mother, we will first filter the mother to remove any values that have come up in the head of the father. Then we will apply the remaining mother's values in the same order that they appear in the mother. Note that the ordering here is important. To elaborate on that a bit, in our selection video, regardless of the selection method that we were using, we were more likely to pick a parent that was fitter. So in this case, some component of our parent's sequences are likely causing them to be fitter and thus get selected. Therefore, when performing the crossover, we want to maintain as many of the traits that our parents have while we combine them. Think smaller sequences inside of an individual that are perfect, even though the overall solution isn't. We can then take the same approach using the head of the mother sequence, and just like that, we have ourselves two brand new offspring. So jumping to the do generation loop, we are going to write var offspring a, offspring b, is equal to get offspring, and we will pass the mother and father. Visual Studio will then very kindly offer to create us a method with this signature, to which I will oblige. Uh, but as there wasn't enough information for Visual Studio to determine the return type, we will need to update both of those to individual. Then we will just update father and mother to be individual A and individual B. You'll see why in a second. Creating each of our offspring is actually going to be the exact same approach with which individual is which parent flipped. So we can break this out into its own method. So we can type var offspring a equals do crossover and we'll pass in individual a and individual b. And again, Visual Studio will offer to make the method and we can allow it, but we just need to fix up the return type. Then in our crossover, we can type var offspring b is equal to do crossover. And this time we'll pass in individual b and then individual a. Then we can immediately return offspring A and offspring B. And now our crossover method is complete. So now let's jump down to that do crossover method. The first thing that we want to do in our do crossover method is to get our crossover position. If we want to get a position between one and sequence length minus one, we can do this by typing var crossover position is equal to random dot next which takes in a minimum value one and a maximum value, which is sequence.count minus one. Next, we will grab the head from individual A and we can do this by typing var offspring sequence is equal to individual A dot sequence dot take. And then we need to provide a number which is how many values to take. So in this case, that's just crossover position. And then lastly, we will call dot to list to evaluate it. Next, we are going to loop over each of the items in individual B. If they don't exist in our sequence so far, we're going to add them. To aid in this, we're going to create a hash of all of the existing values in our sequence. We can do this by typing var appeared is equal to offspring sequence dot to hash set. Now we can type for each 
var town in individual b dot sequence. Then inside of the braces, we're going to write if appears dot contains town, we will continue because we've already seen this. Then after this, the town does not exist. So we can add it by typing offspring sequence dot add and we'll pass it in the town. Awesome, so now that we have our sequence, all we need to do is to create a new individual from it. Fortunately, our individual constructor takes in a sequence, so we can just type return new individual and we'll pass it in the offspring sequence. Moving back up to our do generation method, we now have our two offspring. Let's add them both to our offspring list, so we can do this by typing offspring.add and pass in offspring A and offspring.add uh, offspring B. Then let's delete our for loop here and instead uncomment the while loop that someone has left here for us. So now when this loop is finished, we have a list of population count worth of offspring, but what are we gonna do with them? This again asks quite an interesting question. In biological systems, after two parents produce a number of offspring, they die and it's up to the offspring to carry on the strong family name. In our genetic algorithm, we aren't limited by such physical restrictions that plague biological systems. So let's take a step back and think about what our ideal outcome is. When we produce offspring, we end up with two times the initial population. However, we want to keep our total population count the same after each generation. So we would need to cull some individuals. So if every offspring that was generated as a result of the breeding was worse than the parent population, it's unlikely but possible, we wouldn't want to keep any of them. Conversely, if every offspring was better than the parent population, we would want to keep all of them but none of the original parent population. Now it could also be 50-50 or absolutely anywhere in between. So the easiest way to ensure that we have the best individuals out of our combined parents and offspring is to add our offspring to our population list, then order them from best to worst, and then take the top population count. Not only does this give us the fittest individuals in our population, but also ensures that after successive generations, it isn't possible for our solution to get worse, only ever stay the same or get better. Jumping back to the code, let's do exactly that. We can type population dot add range and pass in our offspring. Then we need to order the individuals and take the top 100. So we can do this by typing population equals population dot order by, and then we pass a delegate to get the fitness. Then we want to take the top population count. And lastly, we will type dot to list to evaluate it. Whew, okay, so provided that we have done everything correctly, we are ready to roll. Clicking play, we can see that our generation counter is ticking upwards and our paths appear to be getting shorter. Nice. So the values that you are seeing will likely be different to the values I'm seeing, uh, just due to the random nature of the GA. Uh, but once we introduce the mutation method, it will be far more likely that we will find the same optimal results, especially in a problem that is this small. Uh, but that's to come in a future video. Nevertheless, we can now watch our results improving over time. Okay, so let's try something fun. Let's jump to our configuration and change use random towns to true, but we will leave the town count set at 30. Hitting run again, we can see that our paths are much longer this time and it seems to be getting notably better. Excellent, so that is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, the challenge question today is going to be a little harder than usual. What is one way that we could introduce additional diversity into our population once we are breeding? Good luck, leave your ideas in the comments down below and I will see you in the next one.